and welcome to Random Access. Today we have an amazing guest with us. He's an artist of many media, but he's best known for his Burning Man art, Bob Marzuski. Welcome and thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. So let's just get right into it. Could you tell us a little bit about Burning Man and maybe what, how did you first experience it? Um, back in the late 90s, uh, I had a party at my house and uh, a guy that worked for me brought his girlfriend and she looked around my house and saw the, the art hanging on the walls and hanging from the ceilings and said, do you go to Burning Man? And I said, no, what's that? And she sort of, we, we never really carried on the conversation. The following year we had the same, I had the same party and again she came and she says, you don't go to Burning Man. And I said, what is this? And I, I forced her to sort of tell me what the whole thing was. Well, the two of them brought me to Burning Man my first time. Um, what Burning Man is, is basically a huge art festival out in the middle of a desert in northern Nevada. Uh, there's not a blade of grass anywhere, but for about a week, um, up to 70,000 people show up, build a city. Wow, 70,000. Yeah, about 70,000 wow. people last year. And we, we build this city that's filled with art. There's about five, 600 pieces of art, plus a lot of camps that are based around art sort of projects. And um, people come out, there's a, it's a no-commerce city where... Uh, you can't buy or sell anything. People have bring so much excess that they gift things. Um, any particular night, you can go out and get a get a meal or get um, entertainment at hundreds and hundreds of different locations. Wow! So now you said five or six hundred pieces of art. Do those all go up in flames? No, not all of them do. Um, a lot of the larger pieces do because they're built on site and there's really no way to take them apart and take them home. I see. And so. Can you tell us a bit about some of your past Burning Man projects? Sure. Um, probably one of my favorite pieces uh, was two years ago, a piece called the Mayan Tricycle. Uh, was that in 2012? Yeah, it was in 2012 <laughs> in, in time for the, the, the end of the world that was supposed yes. to happen when the Mayan Tricycle, when the calendar basically rolled, rolled over. Um, it was a large, like 27 foot tall wheel with a smaller wheel inside of it. And when about eight or 10 people got inside of it, they could, they could run like a hamster wheel and cause both wheels to spin, and it would sort of advance the, the Mayan year. Come to Burning Man, get some exercise. Yeah, as a matter of fact, <laughs> after about a minute uh, of, of moving this 9,000 pounds of wood, um, people would come out huffing and puffing with just these grins on their faces because it was just so much fun. They were running over each other and falling and, and everything else. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Wow. So then... When that come time, it come time to put that on flame, was it sad? Did you hate to see it go up in flames? I, I burnt uh, four or five pieces out there, and if any of them I could have brought back home, this one I would have. It was it was absolutely beautiful. The paintwork was was amazing. The the structure itself was worked absolutely flawlessly, but it wasn't really built to take home, and it would have mm -hmm. taken a, a helicopter airlift to bring it home. So there was really no question of actually trying to save it. I see. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece of art, and I love. How it looks when it's in flames. Yeah, it was it was an interesting night because we had dust storms all day long, and the winds were up to 30, 40 miles an hour constantly. Mm -hmm. Just before we burned it at one in the morning, the, the wind dropped down to about 25 miles an hour, and when I set it on fire, the uh, the flames going through it looked like a jet engine oh. just burning itself up. <laughs> wow, that's that sounds amazing. So, are there any other past favorites? Um, yeah, I did a, a piece back in 2009 that was called Intelligent Design, and it was basically a uh, uh, evolution piece with a fish, crocodile, dog, orangutan, and a human sort of coming up out of, out of the, the, the muck. And then it was a place for the, the participants to stand and be the next step of evolution. Yeah, and I think that you brought that picture in also. Uh -huh. Now, is, was that a little girl on the bear? Yeah, um, that was, uh, it was, it's actually a dog. It sort of looked, everyone thought it, everyone thought it was <laughs> a, a bear. And uh, this little girl, just after I set the piece up, came over and she was missing her dogs because they don't Aww. allow dogs in the desert. And uh, so she was just sort of hugging onto it while her, oh. while her mom was there. <laughs> that sounds so sweet. So I had heard the rumors, but would you agree? I mean, this picture makes it seem like, is Burning Man a family-friendly event? Yes, it is. Uh, the, there have been children at Burning Man since it started in 1986. Uh -huh. And every year there's a large number of, of children, anywhere from, from very, you know, less than a year old up to teenagers and beyond. Uh, there's actually an area called Kidsville, where it's, um, you know, families are basically there. And it's really kind of nice because then one set of parents can watch several kids and let the other parents go out and, and see the rest of the town. But you see kids riding around on bikes in the desert, which is the sort of the natural mode that most people use out there. And they're all over the place and they're, <laughs> they're welcome. 
So it just sounds like a friendly community atmosphere. Yes, it is. And one of the nice things about it is it's, it's a decommodified uh, location, which means that there's really nothing that you can buy and sell there ex except for one place where you can get tea and, and coffee and another place where you can get ice to keep your food uh, in, intact. Um, as a result, people have a tendency to bring excess of things. And so they gift other people with all sorts of things, from food to um, jewelry to uh, uh, entertainment and all sorts of other so things. So it's a trading and bartering system. Well, it's not even trading and bartering. It's more a gifting. It's not oh. when you give something, you're really not doing it with the expectation of getting something back in return. Mm -hmm. But you probably will from someone else in a, in a different context. Wow, that's very interesting. I'm glad to hear it's family friendly. I've always wanted to go, and maybe now I can take my family for our next vacation. Hour. Well, I think you know, I think it's a really good place for for people that like uh, like to have their kids experience something new to go to. Yes. So um, let's look around here. You've brought some amazing models to uh, show us. Okay. Would you like to go ahead and tell us a bit about those? Sure. Um, one of the other things about Burning Man is that they have um, a theme every year, and so sometimes my art pieces have to do with the theme. The one over here, the, the end, was uh, a year that they did uh, that had to do with um, the American Dream was the theme. And so as far away from the city as possible, I put this large, the end sign that was 20 feet tall, 24 feet wide. Wow, 20 feet tall and 24 feet yeah. wide. And it was basically sort of signifying the end of the, the American Dream. And I put a bunch of magic markers there to allow people to, and I put a couple of questions on the side, the end of dot, dot, dot and the American dream is dot, dot, dot. And people wrote all sorts of different ideas of what they thought mm -hmm. on the art piece. Yeah, and then we have a photograph of that up in flames as well. It just, it really makes the letters pop, the end, and it, you can just see how it's glowing. It looks beautiful. I'm sure that was amazing in the desert. Yeah, it was, and it was very interesting. I was trying to get the, the piece to, to basically, when it burned down, to just drop right in its footprint so all the, you know, there wouldn't be any wood off to the side. And it did, but in a totally unexpected way. The, the, the top of the piece rotated 180 degrees and fell, and when it fell, almost every stick fell right in the footprint of the, of the actual piece. Oh, wow. Um, so that was, that was a little fun. I, I, was, I, <laughs> I was expecting it to sag straight down. I never, never saw the twist coming, and it, was, it sort of stunned me when I actually saw it. But I mean, the fact that it fell right in place was, was very yeah. unusual. And then what else have we here? Uh, as well as Burning Man stuff, I've been doing a lot of art uh, the rest of my life. Over my shoulder here is a, a, a chrome globe that I built many, many years ago. About the same time, I was building these uh, trumpets that uh, have working. Uh, are those pennies on the valves? Yeah, the valves are uh, <laughs> pennies, and uh, my name's engraved in one of them in the center there. <laughs> Very crafty. One of the other projects that I've been doing uh, for the last um, four years now has been a, a series of torsos, women's torsos. And basically, it goes along with my idea that um, any, you know, that, that one of something is usually garbage, but a thousand of them is the beginning of an art piece. Uh, so I started, I had collections, that, like most artists, I have collections and piles of things. And so the, the, the girls, as I call them, uh, are torsos that are made out of a whole bunch of the same sort of things. The first one I did was made out of pennies. Um, I've done other ones, Linguini, uh, the, the one in the middle, whose name is Florence, after Florence Nightingale, oh. is made out of band-aids. Uh, the one on the end is uh, all uh, made out of safety pins. And I just call it lacy because it almost looks like sort of lace. Oh, I see. I love this this penny torso. It just it makes me think of the James Bond Miss Money Penny. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so um, we also have your current project. Mm -hmm. So this year for Burning Man, you're going to be working on something called the Santa Cruz Wave. Is that correct? Yeah, it's actually called Cruise the Wave. Cruise the and Wave. Cruz as spelled as C-R-U-Z as in Santa Cruz. Oh, I see. Uh, it's going to be an 18 foot tall wave, about 80 feet long when, when the whole thing is done. Um, people will be able to climb inside of it. They'll be able to climb onto some surfboards that will have fixed into the, uh, in the uh, tube. And um, if we have enough money to, to basically build it the way we want to, we're going to have the whole thing covered much tighter than what it shows there mm -hmm. so that people can either ride their bikes or maybe even skateboards over the surface. Wow, that's very interesting. So now you have so much work going into each project. How does that get started? How does the design and who funds these projects? Um, some of the smaller pieces I fund myself. Um, we don't get any money from outside typically. Um, the, uh, this, this project is a big Santa Cruz project and everybody in Santa Cruz will be working on trying to raise money. We figure it's going to cost somewhere in the neighborhood. I just totaled up the numbers today and it's going to be somewhere around $13,000. Oh. 
Um, that we'll goes be, up in flames. That goes up in flames <laughs> after about a beautiful. week. But it's beautiful. Yeah, and it's, it'll be a gorgeous fire, but it, it does take a lot of time and effort to build. Uh, we're going to have a Kickstarter site, which is uh, one of these crowdfunding sort of a thing. I've been, been working on setting that up right now. And um, would definitely um, invite anybody that uh, is seeing this piece to, to go to the, the website, uh, cruise the, cruisethewave.org, where we'll have information about how you can donate and be part of this whole thing. All right, so 2014 at Burning Man is Cruise the Wave. Very interesting. And now you have your own website as well. I have my own website. Um, uh, out on the desert, most people have a, a pseudonym that they go by. Uh, it's called their playa name. Uh, I go by Wizard, uh, W-I-Z-Z-A-R-D, because I have the domain wizard.com. So it's with, double Z. Yeah, W-I-Z-Z-A-R-D.com. Okay. And if, if, uh, if you go there, what you'd see is um, the last 16 years of Burning Man art that I've been doing. There's 20 gigabytes or so of images that I've got of that, plus the art pieces you see, plus many other things that I work on. So have you gone to Burning Man every year for 16 years? Yeah, since 1998 wow. I've been going. Uh, <laughs> it started out when I, when I first was there. It was about uh, 15,000 people, and it's slowly grown every year. It's gone up a little bit. And like I said, last year it was close to 70,000 people, and this year I think they're expecting about the same number. Uh, yeah, I know that I've heard a lot more about it in the last few years, and it's piqued my interest, so I would be one of those first-time First time attendees as well. Yeah, there's, I mean, that's, they're called virgins, the ones that come out there for the first time. <laughs> and every year it amazes me how many people are coming out for the first time. Uh, it's a lot of Americans, but I find, you know, you find people from all over the world. There's a lot of, you know, Europeans, Germans, and, and Swiss, and Dutch, and so forth that come. And there's always a contingent from Australia, which amazes me that they're coming from the other side of the world. Wow. Um, and there's, uh, last year they had about uh, 40 people that came from Africa because Part of the uh, Burning Man project has been that there are regional groups. Santa Cruz is one of the regional groups. Um, but there are regional groups in South Africa, in, in Japan, all over Europe. Um, two years ago when I did the uh, Mayan tricycle, one of the funders was the, the group from Latvia. Oh, wow. And so there are people from all over the world that have their own events. And Africa has one of the largest ones. I think theirs is actually going on in the next week or two. They have a, a, a large desert area there where they have their own Burning Man type wow. of event. So this Burning Man type art festival, I mean, it happens around the world. That's amazing. They basically spun off from Burning Man. Um, the, the idea has been so fascinating to so many people. The whole, uh, the, the fact that you're, you're really not going there to watch something else. You, everyone is a participant. And that's one of the main things. It's, it's like everyone is a, is a participant and there's no spectators. Well, of course you're spectating from you know, time to time. But the idea is that everyone, we are the ones that build the city. Okay. The, the Burning Man organization lo uh, offers the location to build this, but the, the event is different every year because the people that come are different every year, and what they bring with them is different every year. Yeah. It sounds like a fascinating experience. So again, if we want to check out your work, we can go to wizard.com, two Zs, and uh, does the project itself have a website? Yes, it does. Cruise the, cruise the web .org. Oh cruisetheweb.org. Yes. Okay. So thank you so much for coming tonight. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you. I'm sure that these uh, amazing projects will be fascinating for many more years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Is that our turn? <laughs>